Welcome to another GibbsCam version 14 tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to create custom tools in Gibbs. We're going to bring in some custom tools from um, Tool Vendor as well as create a tool using the tool holders that are in Gibbs. So for right now, if I open up my body bag, you can see I've imported a number of tools. These, most of these are from Sandvik. There's a, a few others, uh, brands here as well, but the majority of them are Sandvik. So let's create some custom tools here. So I just started with a three axis vertical mill, which would be just fine. Uh, the stock size does not matter. It could be anything you want, but we just have the XY plane as normal, just fine. Let's close that. So let's bring in our first tool. I'm going to bring in the tool holder. If I go to a side view, you can see now Sandvik puts the uh, origin, the XYZ, at the center of the tool and at the gauge line. Now this is the gauge line for a Cat 40, which is about an eighth of an inch from this flange to here. Now if you're running Big Plus, um, that'll be the gauge length will be right on the face here if you're running HSK which is probably your best holder in the world um, it'll be from here and Capto same thing so this is a cat 40 and that's where the origin is going to be so what we want to do is we want to bring in the holder and the cutter because I'm going to have a custom holder as well as the cutter so I'm going to bring in this cutter as well and they put the cutter uh, the origin right at the top of the flange there now before you get too excited we want to make sure that uh, the uh, inserts and the part are together which in this case I've already added these together because uh, normally Sandvik separates these from the body of the cutter but these I added these together already so let's just kind of move this down first out of the way a little bit okay now let's just add these two together so they're kind of linked together so I'm going to go up to plugins and down to solids alignment and you want to make sure face selection is on so you can select the different faces like this. So click on the first face that you want to move. Hold control, second one you want to uh, join it to and just click on that mate button and they're mated together. Now let's add those together because right now they're just separate so I'm going to just add them together it makes it a little easier for me. Just go to solid modeling click on the plus and now they're one body okay next thing you want to do is just go to modify and shrink wrap visible and Gibbs is going to wrap geometry around the part so it's a little easier than doing a, um, a plane uh, you could do a plane at, a double, at another coordinate system and you can get the same thing but this works pretty fast so if I open up my document page you can see from the gauge line to the face of the tool 3.96907. Now you don't have to worry about it too much if you're just uh, not using machine sim, but if you're using machine sim, machine sim needs to know the gauge length from the tool, from the gauge line to the end of the tool. So that's why we're going to use these numbers here. So next we are going to uh, create a custom tool. So just double click here. It's going to bring up this menu here and we're going to click on it says to select a body so I want to do 3D form so I'm going to select the whole body and I'm going to click apply and that's going to create our custom tool now it's going to bring this alarm up on many tools this tool may not render correctly because it is non-metonymic that's how you say it in Z what that means is the bottom is not flat it, it kind of goes concave and so that's why it brings up that alarm so it's just kind of giving you a warning there but before we do that we want to move it up as you can see the icon here doesn't look quite correctly so before we make the custom tool it's probably easier just to modify and move that up so the uh, face of the tool is right at Z0 so you could just copy this number and paste it into here and now you can see the tool is perfectly in line with the plane. So now we can go back to the custom tool, click on the tool again, click apply, and this time it's going to bring up the same alarm, but now you're going to get a little better picture of it right here. So if you see this picture looking weird, it's because your 
tool is way below uh, the plane or the zero point there and you can look here and you can see that's what the tool looks like now the only other thing you need to do on here is put in the gauge length so let's just click this little island uh, icon right here and let's click on specify tool offset and again we'll just put in this number here actually instead of pasting it we'll just type it in 3.96907 okay that tool is all ready to go okay let's bring a couple other tools in here I'll put this back in the body bag let's bring back our uh, next tool there's the tool holder here and let's bring in the um, actually let's put this back let's bring in the actual tool with its cutter on here because you can see these are two separate ones like I mentioned Sandvik does their inserts separately so we want to add those together first add them together so now it's one piece okay let's just move this down out of the way so when we bring in the holder they're not overlapping just by holding control alt then you can just drag that out of the way a little bit so let's bring in our tool holder okay now we can either drag it up there or if you know the exact amount you want to move it to you can do that as well I'm just gonna put one inch in there and maybe another one inch there okay that looks pretty good you could measure it of course and put it exact as you like but uh, this will be good for this demonstration so let's add these two together okay now they're one body again modify shrink wrap visible shrink wrap visible is only going to only going to shrink wrap around the part that's on the screen okay if you have other parts in the body bag or anything else and you just do a shrink wrap it's going to wrap everything that's in the body bag and try to in, uh, envelop it in stock so make sure you just do shrink wrap visible okay let's open up our document page you can see I need to translate that up 5.89255 and that's at Z0 so now let's create our tool now second custom tool 3d form says select a body we have it selected click on apply and it's going to probably bring up that same alarm yep okay still looks good all right let's go to this icon here and let's put in that same amount there 5.89255 okay and that one's done now I'm going to bring in another tool here so that's in the body bag now let's bring up the one last tool let's bring up the tool holder here for the slitting saw as you can see and let's bring up the slitting saw and the insert that goes around it again we're going to add these two together so they're one body the insert and the, the actual cutter there okay let's kind of move that out of the way there we go okay let's go up to plugins solids alignment again face selection on select that face and we want to mate it to that surface right there and there we have it together so now let's add these together face selection off click that that and add those together and you can see they're all one piece now okay so now let's do modify shrink wrap visible look at our document page that's where we need to move it up to so let's type in that value there 2.27423 okay and that's there alright now let's make a tool out of it so again custom tool holder okay click on your model make sure 3d forms on click apply it's gonna bring up that alarm again because the inserts aren't flat they're rounded and they go up uh, concave in there so okay that's good now the only thing left to do is put in our overall length to the gauge length right there so 
27423. Okay. So I'm going to do the others uh, here so we don't take up all your time, and then we'll show you how to machine with it. One last tool we want to show you before we start machining. This is a porting tool, and this is from a different vendor, and you can see they drew it basically sideways from our plane, which is just fine. So just turn face selection on, click on that face, right click and say align it to the face. Okay. If for some reason it goes upside down, you can just align that face again, and it'll automatically flip it. So very easy to do. Okay, this one, we're going to use the tool holder that's already in Gives, but this is going to be a custom tool. So let's create this tool. Let's do the tool first. So click uh, on the tool. Make sure the whole thing is one piece. It is. And click Apply. And there's our uh, tool. Now we want to do a standard tool holder in Gibbs. So let's just go down to Tool Holder. Not a custom holder, but a tool holder. And let's just uh, choose Call It looks pretty good there and length out of holder we need to move this up first before we get the length out of holder so again let's do a shrink wrap visible look at our document page you can see it's exactly three inches so I'm just going to modify translate that up three inches okay the tip of the tools there all right now let's go back to our tool page and again let's uh, choose the uh, call it tool holder there and we have it sticking out of our tool holder two inches and that's what it looks like there so looks good so let's go over to machining now one last reminder if you uh, are going to machine a part uh, and you want to use these tools over and over then it's best to save the tool list so I'm just going to click on here and the last tool sorry and just right click and say save selected tools give it a name any name you want save it where you'd like and click on save and then you'll have your list now we'll move over to the other part so here we have the part we're going to machine with our custom tools so let's bring on our custom tool list just right click load tools browse and our tool list and there's our tool list with all our custom tools so let's start machining. So our first process is going to be roughing and with our face tool. And we have 50 thou of stock. We're going to face it down to zero. Standard stuff there. And there we have our facing operation. The next one's going to be drilling. So let's clear this one out. And let's do a drilling process with our drill says uh, drill over there actually you can name these if you want to uh, have better names on there and drill we're gonna drill down just an inch deep okay so I'll select the holes or the points you want to drill and do it so that's our drilling so the next operation, I believe, is going to be, let's see what our third tool is. That's going to be our slitting saw there. So let's clear this out. Bring back a contour with tool number three, our slitting saw. I'm going to tell Gibbs that the geometry is actually minus three quarter. And we want to cut to minus three quarter. And I'm going to force it in three quarters of an inch. And we'll just select that and do it. That should be our slitting saw. Now I want to uh, next do a chamfer. We'll just leave this in there. We'll just choose a different tool, which should be this tool here, which is our chamfer. So drag our chamfer down. And we're going to start at zero, top of the part, and go down 150 thou. I'm going to force it into the part by minus 100 thou. Everything's still good there, so we'll do that. Then uh, the last tool we want to do is porting tool. So again, we're going to go back to drilling, and it should be the last tool there. Should be our porting tool. And I'm actually just going to go down an inch on there. And we're just going to select these points here. 
to drill and click on do it. Alright, so now we're all done. Let's uh, do some rendering here. So let's click on OpSim and we'll turn on everything there looks good. Let's turn on colors to make sure the tool number has a color there and click on play. There is our facing operation. We'll move it up a little bit faster. Drilling, slitting saw, chamfer, and the last tool is going to be our porting tool. And it all looks pretty good there. All right, now we're going to bring in our machine sim model so you can see it in the actual machine. So let's turn off our render and let's bring up our instead of op sim, we're going to choose a machine sim. So if we go down to machine sim and there's our machine there and let's click on play and let's bring this up a little bit closer there okay now we have our facing operation slow it down a little bit our drilled holes slitting saw chamfer porting tools and it's all good. And as you can see by putting the gauge length in, there's our gauge length right there, which is about, like I say, about an eighth of an inch uh, from the there to the flange, unless you're running Big Plus or HSK. So thanks for watching. Hope that helps.